We filled these finite elements software with wide uh, analysis capabilities. Our set of analysis options include magnetic uh, simulation, part for AC magnetics, DC magnetics, and transit magnetics problems. Electric suit includes AC conduction, electrostatic DC conduction, and transient electric problem uh, option. And uh, we also have thermostructural part, which covers stress analysis, transient heat transfer, and steady state heat transfer. And all this is considered as a different parts of multi-physical analysis approach, because it is possible to simulate problems with more than one field involved. And it is possible to transfer results from one simulation as a sources to other simulation. As you see on this slide, it is possible to combine thermal analysis, electromagnetic analysis, and stress analysis. And in some cases, it is possible to combine several types of magnetic analysis for different setups. So today, Alex will show you how to apply this for coils, and we will do not only magnetic simulation, but also estimate thermal parameters and stresses. Uh, what is also unique about quick field? We have open object interface, so it is possible to utilize not only user interface and control quick field with your mouse and keyboard strokes, but it is also possible to connect quick field to other applications which interact with quick field core through application programming interface. This way, you may use. Uh, Excel scripts or MATLAB scripts. You may do your own programming and connect it to QField Core. Or we have a very simple tool for parametric analysis called Label Mover, which also interacts with QField Core through the same API. This API is called Active Field. So there are plenty of possibilities, and most important. All of them are implemented very simple way, so there is no need for special training or special uh, background to utilize all this spectrum of QField options. QField is a very simple package, and we will prove it today, showing you how to apply it for electromagnetic coil simulation and analysis. Hello. Today, the following cases will be reviewed. The simplest case of the coil is a one-turn lock. Then, the most often made case, the multi-turn winding. The special types of coils, the Helmholtz coil, the Maxwell coil, the Brooks coil. Then we will also simulate the coil connected with electric circuit and the related cases, the coil heating, the stress in the coil, the mechanical stress in the coil and the coil dynamics. Let's start with the first case. This is the simplest coil, the one turn circle move. The coil has the form of the ring. The ring radius is 100 millimeters and the wire radius is 2 millimeters. The coil carries the direct current of 1 ampere. The wire radius is much smaller than the ring radius, so we can utilize the analytical solution and compare our results against it. Let's start quick field and simulate the problem from scratch. So I create the new problem. The loop. The problem type is magnetostatics. 
is we have the direct current in the coil. The model class is axisymmetric as the ring features the cylindrical symmetry. In quick field, the axis of rotational is the horizontal one, and you have to draw only the upper half of the cross section in the geometry model. Magnetostatics, axisymmetric. First, I draw the wire cross section. It is composed from two half circle arcs. So this is the wire. Then I move the wire to its proper position. 100 millimeters above the axis of rotation. Next I should add the external air. In quick field, I should limit the calculation area, so I plot the external boundary. Now the geometry model is ready, and I have to give the labels to specific geometry objects. Here is the air. Here is the coil. And here is the boundary. With labels I can identify geometric objects and assign physical properties. In magnetic problem I should specify magnetic properties. For the air I specify the relative magnetic permeability of the air, 1. For the coil which is made of copper, I specify magnetic permeability of 1 and I specify the field source, the total current of 1 ampere. The boundary is moved far away from the coil, so I believe the field fades to 0 there. So I set zero potential on the boundary. We have the model ready and the material data ready. The next important step, step is to build the finite element mesh. To do so, press the button Build Mesh. That is all. Now we are ready to solve the problem. I save all simulation files and press solve button. Here you can see the field distribution. In the field picture you can view the field lines, the vectors, the color map of different values.
You can also plot contours to view the field distribution along these contours and calculate integral values. Let's build a contour to view the field distribution along the axis. Here I click the edges to build the contour along them. This is my contour. Now I press the XY plot button to see the flux distribution. You see that the field values and the flux distribution is not very smooth. That's because the mesh quality is not very good. Let's refine the mesh and solve the problem again. And again take a look at the flux distribution. You should know that all the pictures and data you see you can save or copy. So let's compare the field distribution on the axis with the one provided by analytical solution. I already have the calculated data in Excel. This is the analytical solution. In quick field, I switch to the table. In the table, I choose the values I need. I need the coordinate and the flux density. Now I copy all the data in the Excel sheet. I have I have to replace the decimal delimiter. On my computer the decimal delimiter is comma. It is more convenient to compare the plots, so I will add the second plot. With blue line are shown the analytical solution and with red line is shown the calculated values from quick field. The difference you can see on the screen. I believe it's a good proof that quick field is a reliable tool. But let's return to quick field. With contour, we can calculate the flux for the coil. I simply plot the contour across the free space inside the coil and calculate all the flux that cross my contour.
the sign of the value depends on the contour direction and the flux direction. Flux direction I can estimate if I switch on the vectors. Using the magnetic flux value, I can calculate the coil inductance. You should simply divide the magnetic flux by the current value. Or I can also use the inductance wizard. The wizard is a bit more accurate. as it calculates the flux inside the wire. That's all with the single turn coil. We can calculate the flux, we can calculate the flux distribution. and the magnetic field in every point. But what should I do if I need more flux? In other words, I need more inductance. I can add more turns and get the multi-turn winding. How should I get the turns? The answer is simple. You should draw the turns in the model. Here I add the second turn. The turn has the same label, coil. So one label identifies two blocks. In the label properties, I specify that the conductors are connected in series. Thus, I get the two turns winding. Let's solve the problem again. I have two turns winding now. And I get more flux. You may ask what is the fast way to add turns? Well, you can duplicate them. You should select the object, then follow to the Edit Duplicate Selection and specify the displacement vector and number of copies. Another way is to import the geometry model from the cut drawing. Quickfield supports DXF import. The practical question arises. How many turns can you add in the model? Let's take a look at the real problem, the air core coil that has seven and a half thousand turns. You can see the coil dimensions on the screen. The coil then is three hundred millimeters. Mm -hmm. 
the internal diameter is 50 millimeters and the external diameter is 100 millimeters. There is no core inside the coil. The coil carries direct current of 1 ampere and consists of 7.5000 turns. You know that in the long solenoid the field is uniform, so let's take a look how this coil should be simulated and check the field distribution inside the coil. So I start the quick field. Here I have the problem. The problem type is magnetostatics, as the coil carries the direct current. The model class is axisymmetric. The coil features cylindrical symmetry, so only upper half of the coil is represented in the geometry model. There are three objects in the model. First, I have the air. For the air, I specify the magnetic permeability of 1. Then I have the coil. The coil consists of 7,500 blocks. You can see that each turn is, rep is represented by the separate block. For the coil, I specify the magnetic permeability of 1 and the field source the current in the conductor. And all the currents, all the conductors are connected in series. And I have the external boundary. Let's take a look at the field distribution. I will switch on the color map of flux density. You can see, indeed, there is the region with uniform magnetic field inside the coil. And using the field picture, you can estimate the size of this region and the flux density value. to turn windings are often simulated by one loop with large cross section and uniformly distributed current density instead of simulating all individual wire cross sections. This led to, you to simplify the model. So let me show you This is the example of the same coil, but the coil is represented by the solid block, only one block. And for the coil, I specify the 
total current, the ampere turns, 7,500 turns per 1 ampere. Let's take a look at the field distribution. Again, I will switch on the column map. And adjust the picture so you can compare. By the flux density value, you can guess that I get the same results. So, this is the fast way to simulate the coil. You can turn, you can draw in the model every turn. Or you could draw the single block and specify the total current. The flux distribution produced by the coil will be the same. Please note that this approach, you cannot use this approach if you want to calculate the induced voltage in the winding. Now let's review some special types of coils. The Hamboldt coil is used to produce uniform field distribution. Unlike solenoid, it requires much less material. The Hamboldt coil consists of two circular loops. The distance between loops is equal to the loop's radius. Each loop carries the same current. Here is the quick yield model. Again, the problem type is magnetostatics and the model class is axisymmetric. There are four objects in my model. The air and for the air I specify the magnetic permeability, the boundary with zero magnetic potential on it, and the coils. The coils are simulated by infinitely thin wires. Each coil carries the current of one ampere. First coil and the second coil. Let's take a look at the field picture. I will use the contour tool to see the field distribution on the axis. Here I build the contour and switch on the XY plot. This is the uniform magnetic field produced by Hamburg's coil and the air is located between coils. This is the third coil and this is the second coil. Even more uniform 
magnetic field produces the Maxwell coil that consists of three coils. And you can see that the current values and coil position are arranged the special way. Let's take a look in quick field and see the field distribution in the case of Maxwell coil. This is the Maxwell coil example, magnetostatics, axisymmetric model class. Here are three coils, and for each coil I specify the current. Now let's take a look at the field distribution. Again, I build the contour. This is the uniform magnetic field area produced by three coils. This is the first coil, the second coil, and the third coil. You can find the detailed description of the Maxwell coil and the Helmholtz coil examples on our website. And we continue now with the another example the Brooks coil. The Brooks coil has specially adjusted dimensions which assure maximum value of inductance with a given length of the wire. Again, this, is, this example is published on our website. Please refer to it for more information. So we have little time to pay attention to this example. And we continue with the coil and electric circuit example. With quick field, with DC magnetics you can calculate the inductance of the coil on direct current and then use the inductance value in the circuit simulator or you can connect the coil to the circuit and simulate them together. There is no point connecting the circuit on direct current. The inductance value has no effect on direct current. The voltage drop on the coil will be caused only by the wire resistance. So, the circuit can be attached in two problems only, in AC magnetics and in transient magnetics. Let's start quick field and open the AC magnetics problem. Here it is. Let's check the problem properties. The problem type is AC magnetic. And the model class is axisymmetric and the frequency is 50 Hz. There is the circuit file that indicates that the circuit will be simulated. Now a couple of words about, about the case. We have the 
multi-tone winding, the electric circuit is shown in red. There is the AC voltage source, the frequency is 50 Hz. There is the resistance in the electric circuit. The coil material, electric conductivity is specified. And remember that we will need all the turns present in the model so that each turn adds the value of induced voltage. Number of turns is again seven and a half thousand. So back to quick field. The problem type is AC magnetics. The model class is axisymmetric, and the frequency is 50 Hz. In axisymmetrical model, only the upper half of the cross section present. In the model, I have three objects. I have the air, and for the air, I specify magnetic permeability of the air. I have the coil. And for the coil, I specify the magnetic permeability of the coil and the electric conductivity of the copper. Also, I specify the series connection of the conductors. And the field source for, for conductors must be specified in the circuit. So let's open the electric circuit file. In the circuit there is the voltage source, the amplitude value is specified, the resistance, and the quick field block that represents the coil. The value of inductance and the value of resistance I do not know yet. They will be calculated automatically by QuickField during the field simulation. Let's take a look at the results. Here is the field picture the field lines and the current density color map are switched on. By the color distribution scale, you can guess that the current density is almost uniformly distributed. The current density varies from 9.0 to 9.7. So if we do not need to know the induced voltage, we can simulate the coil with a single turn as we did in DC magnetics with uniformly distributed current density. In the field picture, you can calculate the field values. The flux density the field distribution. And in electric circuit, you can calculate the circuit values. Current and voltage torque.
So this is the way to integrate the real coil in electric circuits and run field and circuit simulations together in Quickfield. The current flowing in the coil produces magnetic field and the heat losses. It is easy to calculate the heat losses in quick field. You should simply select the coil with contour and calculate the joule heat integral. You see the average value of joule heat losses in my coil is 27 watt. And the next problem we will discuss is the heating of the coils. To calculate the losses in the coil, we simulate magnetic problem. To calculate the temperature in the coil, we simulate the heat transfer problem. Here we have the same coil, the ambient temperature and the convection coefficients are given. Now let's start the quick field. Here is the heat transfer problem. It uses the same geometry model. In the heat transfer problem, I specify the thermal properties of materials. For the coil, I specify the thermal conductivity. And you can specify the losses value right here. Or there is another way you can import losses from the magnetic problem. To import losses you have to add the link to magnetic problem and specify the link type. Let's follow to the problem properties link stop. Here you can see I add the data source. I will use the generated heat from my magnetic problem. Now let's take a look at the field distribution. Ah, one moment, the coil is cooled by the air, so on the coil boundary I specify the convection coefficient and the ambient temperature. Again, in heat transfer, I do not specify the power losses, I take them from AC problem. A magnetic problem. Now you can see the temperature distribution in the coil. The heat is generated inside the coil. The coil temperature is 39 degrees. Celsius. And let's calculate the heat flux from the coil.
the same 27 watts. And you can see that the flux is generated inside the coil and then check the direction of the flux. So this is not a simple heat transfer problem, this is the couplet problem. It takes the sources from the magnetic problem. Let's take a look at the next problem. This is the coil stress problem. You know that the current flowing in the coil produces the magnetic force. And the coil tends to expand. And we can calculate the stresses caused by the ampere force in the coil. This is the stress analysis problem. In Quickfield it uses this same geometry model. But in the stress problem I have to specify the mechanical properties for the objects. So for the coil I specify mechanical properties. And the coefficient of thermal expansion. I would like to calculate the stresses, the mechanical stresses in the coil caused by magnetic forces and the temperature field. So in my stress analysis problem I had two types of links. The magnetic forces link from magnetic problem and the temperature field from the heat transfer problem. Now let's take a look at the field distribution. This is the expanded form of the coil. Well, it's scaled, of course. It's not the real dimensions. And you can see the state distribution in the coil. The last problem I would like to show is the coil dynamics. Here is the Helay example. The Helay consists of the solenoid coil with moving core, which disconnects the electric switch contacts. This spring keeps the core in the pull-out position. When the current in the core is turned on, the magnetic field acts on the core, overcomes the resistance of the spring and pulls the core inside solenoid in position where it is stopped by damper, which absorbs the shock. Operating time of this relay and the plunger motion function should be calculated. Of course, it is out of scope of quick field operation. You have to combine the field simulation because for on each plunger position you have to calculate the magnetic field and magnetic force. And you should solve the mechanical dynamics equation.
you can solve the problem manually. Let me show you how to do it. This is the magnetostatic problem. And the model class is axisymmetric. There are four blocks in my model. The air, the winding, where I specify the number of turns multiplied by the current in each turn. The winding is represented by the single block. And the core. Now I can solve the problem I calculate the mechanical force acting on the plunger. Divide the force by the plunger weight and find the acceleration and then solve the mechanical moving equation. The equation that let me know the plunger speed and plunger position in time. But Quickfield has open object interface that allows you to program your tasks. So I have the simple program in, my, in the Excel. You can see that the Excel script invokes the quick field tells quick field to open the model tells quick field to move the plunger in proper position then instruct quick field to solve the problem build the contour and calculate the force acting on the plunger. So this script will utilize the interaction with quick field from Excel. And the second part of the script solves the mechanical movement equation. Calculate the acceleration, the speed and the position. This way it will work faster than manual calculation. Let me show you how it works. I press the run button the initial position the plunger is pulled out then the current is switched on and the plunger moved inside the coil until it meets the damper ring. The ring is not present in the model. And in the Excel I can see the plunger position in time and the plunger speed in time. All this is possible because the quick field has the open object interface. 
That's all for the practical examples for today.